that is my specialist position in the test match under the lid on the short leg, so. <laughs> can beat it, mate. The best player in the world, my nutty. Because our baby rhino. <laughs> Tell me this is illegal information. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Under the Lid, the Pro Cricket Show, episode 19. I'm Jack Brooks. And I'm Catherine Silverbrunt. Feels like 1900 and thousands and millions, isn't it? <laughs> it's flying. It's flying by with every cricket it's season. Flying. As always, this podcast is brought to you in partnership with the PCA and the Cricketer. Um, and considering within in the middle of the hundred. Who better to welcome on? They're one of the stars of last year's edition. And my long-term mate and friend, Tammy Beaumont. She's a superstar, isn't she? Can't wait to get chatting with Tammy. Um, what's happened the last week? It feels like a million one things, and also I can't remember anything that's happened. But I know I've been coaching a lot with Surrey in the Metro Bank. Played a little bit of club cricket. You can't remember any of your normal life because it's just overtaken with coaching oh. and children. I'm, I'm I'm hardly at home, and when I'm at home, it's literally just wiping nappies, napping All with a baby, and getting, yeah, and then just chatting to you for I don't know, <laughs> however long it takes, and listening to what exciting things you're doing, trashing houses, adopting puppies, <laughs> commentating, wearing <laughs> fashionable gears on TV. Like. Uh, yeah, I wore a rogue shirt this time. I'm not going to lie. It went down well though. Of course it I tried, did. Tried. Um, I do try sometimes, actually. Not really. Um, it's quite hard. You know, Isha Gua, one of our best mates, mm. she um, obviously works with BBC and Sky and everyone, it seems. Um, and she has a, a new outfit every, every well, episode, I guess. And it's, it's she rents it and then has to do an Instagram yeah. post of what company it's with. Uh, yeah. That's the dream, I think. That's the one. That's going to be you, isn't it? I mean, it ought to be. But I might have to wear it better than Ish because she does wear it well, doesn't she? She's a she's a supermodel Isha. She's great. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I've just gone way off kilter there. Um, but yeah, we're talking about puppies. Took her for her first injection today. Went well. Says so she's very healthy and um, good looking, pretty dog. She's got long, gangly legs at the minute because she's reaching the old three That's month cute. spot. Awesome. Um, and I also had to host the Rockets annual barbecue Ooh, to have nice. 30 people round. It Were you on the barbecue? Chaos. Were you cooking? Um, yes. Actually, I didn't do – I left that. We've got about five Aussies in the team. Well, there's three players and then two staff, and they obviously hogged the barbie. <laughs> so we stuck them on there because they loved that. And then <sighs> me and that were on salads. Pigeonhole in the Aussies. You do the Barbie, uh, we'll do everything else. Yeah. And then I set up like a golf thing in the back garden. It was great. We were teeing off balls into the go. reservoir. Oh, excellent. <laughs> great neighbours off. No, no problems. <laughs> no neighbours here. Oh, wicked. <laughs> Literally in the middle of nowhere. I thought, well, it looks like, sounds like you've had a great week. But <laughs> I'm, what I'm interested about and excited to hear is from Tammy Beaumont. But just before we get Tammy on... Remember, listeners, you can send in any feedback or questions by using the hashtag under the lid or emailing us at hello at under the lid dot co dot UK. So what can you tell us about Tammy? Well, what isn't there to say about Tammy? She's a legend um, mm -hmm. already. She's made her international debut in 2009, donkeys years ago. She was just 18 um, and mm -hmm. she's gone on to play over 100 ODIs, over 100 T20s, um, or 100 exactly, I think it was. Um, and last year, she became the first woman to score a century in the 100 against us, um, <laughs> and the first English woman to register a double ton. That must have been pretty good. Um, mm -hmm. She's also, this is a funny bit, only the second English woman, so English cricketer, second woman in the world and mm -hmm. fourth English player as in men's and women's to hit an international century in all three formats. Decent. No, she is a proper superstar and very impressive records. And I'm sure she can talk us through every last ball of all of those hundreds as well. Uh, particularly the one against was were you playing in the game when she got the hundred in the in the hundred, the century in the hundred. Excellent. Unfortunately. Can't hear about that then. Um, and she's also she was named the Cinch PCA Women's Player of the Year last year. 
which was for the second time in her career, having previously won it in 2016. She is certainly a modern day legend of the England women's cricket team. Um, but there'll hopefully be a lot more to her than just cricket as well. I'm looking forward to hearing some of the thoughts on the game and life in general. Um, and some unheard stories from the England change room involved in my <laughs> host, who is giggling nervously. Um, or from her wedding. Or from her wedding or end party, yeah. whatever you want to dish the dirt on. <laughs> Right, I think we need to get under the lid. Here she is, Tammy Tilly Bobot. <laughs> hey, Kathy, <laughs> thanks for having me on, guys. Hello, lady. <laughs> hey, Tam. Thanks for coming in to Under the Lid. Well, it's my specialist position in the test match, Under the Lid on the short leg. So, yeah, great to be on board. <laughs> I feel a lot of pressure. I'm dealing with two media superstars now, two Sky Sports behemoths. Yep. <laughs> no, don't worry. You get yourself on, Jack. We'll get you in the pod. Talk Face some for radio. Trash. Face for radio. Face for radio. Well, you we can do that as well. I like a bit of that. You can dress like a scruff, a bit like right now. Um, <laughs> well, so we can't start this without talking about last year, just because it's the most burnt in the memory obviously last summer the ashes um and your double ton obviously in the test match at where i'm very jealous that you played trent bridge um never ever got to play that <laughs> um and obviously winning both white ball series which everybody seems to forget because obviously we lost the ashes uh, we, we drew but, them you know it was we drew them we drew sorry i mean it feels it felt like a lot <laughs> um <laughs> so how how do you reflect on last year, personally? Um, yeah, pretty pretty good year, I think. Um, to get probably two two of the standout moments of the summer um, off my own bat was was really pleasing. Um, I think, other than that, probably a little bit um, inconsistent at times, but yeah, certainly some massive highlights. Um, yeah, I always look back at that that double hundred with a lot of pride, but actually it's also a tough one because we ne didn't actually win the test. We went on to lose the test. And you know me, Cathy, I'm a perfectionist. I'm kicking myself for only getting 20 in the second innings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you could have just... But even if you just shared them, 100 in both, you would you still be satisfied? Oh, no, yeah, no. <laughs> Somehow. It's Somehow. always the way, isn't it? Yeah, I was watching your... Uh, batting because it went on a long time um and me and well not I say the that. slowest double hundred um, in women's test no it, it actually wasn't <laughs> it definitely wasn't um but me and Callum were watching in the hospitality for the times I got to just pop in there and he was a nervous wreck <laughs> and he doesn't normally drink and he was having a couple <laughs> well but between him and my dad they are the worst uh watchers while I'm batting so <laughs> My dad, for years, has just not moved while, while I'm batting. And then almost the minute I get out, you see him toddling off to the toilet. So I can't imagine how he coped for the entire <laughs> test match. Um, but actually, I think the, the, the funniest thing of the whole test, I was um, tea on day three, I think, or lunch or tea on day three, I can't remember which one. But I had literally just broken the record for the highest uh, score by an English woman. I can't remember what it was. Like, it wasn't 200 anyway. It was like 190 something. And I come out for tea and I'm there five minutes early, ready to walk back on. And my mum, dad and Callum, my, my fiance at the time, my now husband, were getting interviewed by the BBC, by Ebbs, on the outfield. Um, Great. And I was just like, what are you doing? Like, without swearing, I was like, as if you are, get like, off. get off the pitch. Like, this is embarrassing. <laughs> um, but actually, what's more hilarious is watching back the interview and... Um, Callum may have had six or seven beers before that, but he really did carry it because mum and dad got massively camera shy mm -hmm. and were just like, yes, yes, very proud, very proud. And that was it. And it was like dead air. <laughs> it was very funny. <laughs> well, at least he did his bit. Without the beer, it might not have been so good. So, you know. Um, so you were, were you 90 odd overnight? No, actually. I was, um, I was batting with, with your natty. Um, I was 100 not out overnight. Um I actually um, remember being, so it was obviously that was the end of day two, been in the field all day and then we, we got got them out um, in the second mm -hmm. session. And I remember saying to Nat, I was like, Nat, I'm actually a bit knackered. Like, can you take the strike? Like, I'm not really sure I'm concentrating, <laughs> like I'm zoning out here. 
And she was like, no, Tam, come on, get on strike, switch on. Like gave me a bit of a sl- no. slap around the face, like not literally. Um, and I'm really glad she did actually, because obviously then I was 100 not out overnight and not like 94 and not sleeping. So yeah, hold on, Natty. Or you might have gone out laps of concentration. Yeah, who knows? Who hold knows? on, Natty. It's, I'll remind her to slap you. <laughs> I've been 90 odd night, not out overnight. Um, but I was so knackered from batting for longer than an hour that I actually wasn't that bothered. <laughs> Fair, enough. But, Fair enough. But I guess I it, you're, you should be you should be used to getting into the nineties and be like, oh, it's just another just another knock, isn't it? Mm, surely not. Yeah, I don't know. Not, not in an Ashes <laughs> Test match, I don't reckon. Not when it would be your first Test match hundred as well. Yeah, fair. Does that mean more to you than any other hundred? I think not. Not at the time. Probably when I finish, it will do. I think at the time for me, the whole thing was about getting on par with them. So they'd got four, four seventy in the first innings. So I almost didn't care what score I got. I just cared what the team got and about trying to level them in the first innings. I think some of my best innings have been when. We've almost been dictated to by the Aussies in the in the field, and then I'm like riled up, going, "No, they're not having this all their their own way." And I kind of come out with <laughs> an absolute um, bit between my teeth, and kind of I'm going to show them and stick it back back on them, kind of attitude. <laughs> That's um, we're very alike in that way. <laughs> I think some of my betting best batting performances ever have been when England are either were out of it. Or we've, or I'm at Yorkshire, and it's like thirty for six. <laughs> yeah, you were thirty for six quite a lot though, like, at Yorkshire, Kathy. <laughs> Your dad prepared the wickets it. at yeah. Barnsley, making sure they're nice green <laughs> seamers, so you get a lot of wickets. <laughs> oh, Mickey! Maybe some giving all my secrets away. Yeah. No, speaking of like how similar we are, Kathy. I just as I'm coming on, I felt like I had to mention all the battles we had over the years, either in the nets or into team games. Do you remember that period when you used to make right. our own teammates cry? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Do you know what? Wow. I was, I'd was? i had a slight nightmare with Nat about this earlier. I said, I wonder how much time he's just going to go on about how much of a <laughs> No, you know you weren't. It was just like you just didn't necessarily – like after I remember that and then we had a chat and it was like, right, Catherine, we're always going to be put on different teams when we do inter-team games. You can have a go at me. On I can have a go at you. You, we can just shout at each other. We can, if we want to get in the battle, we go at each other, and then we walk across the line and we'll go have a drink together and we'll be fine. But stop picking on the people that don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> We're just trying to teach him how to be like you, Tammy. Yeah, obviously. That's obviously. All. Are you two quite That's fiery what... and chatty? Well, I know you're quite fiery, Brunty. I've seen, but. No, you always seem to have a context. smile on your face, Tammy. Is there a lot of chat between you two or just in general you two in the opposition? Uh, I used to chat a bit, oh, but I think God. stump mics have put, put an end to that. Um, can't get caught out anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I like to play on a, a smile no. on my face, but I think at the same time I really want to win and I'm very competitive and love getting in that battle with a bowler like when they, when it's challenging, kind of really getting stuck in and and Kathy was probably one of the biggest in that. Even in the net, she'd be celebrating if she hit me on the front pad. She, in fact, to be honest, she starts appealing before you've even like let it hit the middle mm. of your bat, let alone if it like when she bowls a wobble ball, she's already half appealing. And then even if you middle it, she'd be go like she'd be like, oh every time. When you've Anya was worse at that. <laughs> when you let go of it and you know it's on the right line and you only just need it to nibble and it nibbles and you're like <gasps> And then Tammy gets an inside edge and she's like, Fuck. another, it's going to take another hundred balls in the nets. But we just had like, I don't know, I th- I would like to think that both of us created a great player within each other. There's no way that that didn't happen because I've bowled at Tammy, Tammy's faced me for over a decade in the nets and we always, always got put together. It me v her all the time, and I used to be like, I'd come over to the nets and see the schedule, and I'd be like, oh, <laughs> every time, oh, I must have done oh, that, I don't know, a hundred thousand times because I just knew it was going to be a hard day. So then I had to just get used to having a hard day. There's no like, 
tail enders in there for me with a new ball was always Tammy. And she is so good and so relentless that these battles would just happen. Silent ones, don't get me wrong. They weren't like, we didn't speak. There was like noises, but it was just, you know, intense. And that's the way training should be. It should be like how you play. And that's how we used to train. And I would def- that would definitely set me up in a good way for a proper game. That's why Ashes World Cups, being in the shit, didn't bother us. Honestly, it didn't. Like, yeah, no, I think the hardest right. stuff was happening. No, you're right. Because it was, <laughs> I think that's the thing. It was like you got the best out of each other. You knew you could not have an off day if Catherine was charging in at you. Um, you knew you were <laughs> properly up against it every single time and you had to be switched on. You had to know your skills. And yeah, I think that, that helped when you then come up against a few other other teams that maybe weren't quite as in your face as, as our baby rhino. <laughs> but then I reckon there were days where you kind of, when it happened so much between us, there were days where you kind of wanted that. If somebody gets in the battle with you, you play better. Oh yeah. Even now, so like if, if, if we play against, if we play against numpties or they don't give you anything, it's almost like boring. You don't engage. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> It doesn't bring the best Don't out of you. Don't reveal my it? secrets, Kathy. If I start going <laughs> to your it's for me. It's not for them. No, it's um, <laughs> no, definitely. I still, I still want that now. I feel like for me, playing at my best, it's when you're really challenging yourself in the nets and almost training hard, playing easy. And um, yeah, when Kathy's not there anymore, sometimes I have to find someone else to to provide that. <laughs> well, there's one thing people don't know about Tam is. We'd be in the nets, right, and they'll be spicy AF and you, no one will fancy it. We'd be like, put the ball away, the Duke's ball. When we were, That was when we were messing about with it at the end, at the end of my career. Or, or just any new ball on a green seamer net and your seamers are coming downhill. And even I'm bowling quite quick that day. And you're all stop. bowling massive no balls in the nets. Yeah, yeah. massive no balls. And I'm like... I, I'm like, I'm going to sit this one out, coach. I've, batting's all right today. I'll have one tomorrow, <laughs> some throws. And Tammy's like waltzing up and she's like, I'll go. So she walks in and then somebody backed out of the next session. <laughs> they didn't fancy it because it was seeming everywhere. And Tammy then walks into the other net and goes, well, I'll carry on. <laughs> and <laughs> she just Love goes it. from one, that's about a four-hour net against rapid feral seam bowling yeah maybe easier than that though can't it after that when you get a bit of a psycho really i guess (laughs) she is it's like the harder it is the more tammy wants to do it and i'm like no thanks (laughs) oh but that's why you can bat and i can't it's transferred to runs though hasn't it and talking of more runs you're still the only female player to score 100 in the 100 yeah, Century I reckon I'm. Like, I like to say I'm the only one that scored a hundred in four formats, but um, I don't think that quite counts, does it? <laughs> uh, we'll give you it oh, on yeah. this one. We'll give you it here. Yeah. Um, what I wanted to ask, seeing as you were playing against a certain Kathy Silverbrunt, um, what was your favourite shot of her in that innings? You d- you weren't <laughs> playing, Kathy. You were injured. Oh, she's not playing. Oh, she said she was. Oh, was on the side. That's why she got 100. I weren't playing. Oh, I was, okay. I was out, that was it. I would like torn my hip. That'll be why then. Yeah, honestly, um, that's the only reason why. Only reason why. Tammy hit a ball on about 40. She pounded it flat to square leg, and all it did was hit our fielder in the chest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that girl. So we, we, obviously, we did go on a little, you know, to the bar, to a pub the night that night, and the girl, I said to the girls, like, can I buy you a drink? <laughs> oh, bless her. She's got a hole in her chest. She was, yeah, she was in a bit But that of a was the only of, opportunity. World of uh, pain at that point, anyway. Mm. At what Mentally point in that thinking. innings did you feel like maybe you're on something special here, or did you just think, no, I've got a job to do? I'm not going to think about getting 100, even when you got into the 80s or 90s? Honestly, I can't, I can't really remember it. I just remember every time I was batting at one end, which is hitting towards the taff at Sophia Gardens, I was just like, Mm -hmm. use the wind, hit it up, just hit it up. And I must have hit about 75 (laughs) runs over extra cover, Um, (laughs) which is always a good sign because this year I can't do it at all. So the fact that I could just lift it up there, it was great. Um, So no, I had no idea. I think for me, I realised I'd had a great day when 
um, Bryony Smith was on. I was already on 100, but I just tried to switch it. I've, ne- I've never done it in my life. And I just tried to switch it and I middled it through point before. And I was like, well, it's just when it's your day, it's your day, isn't it? It's your day, isn't yeah. it? Campbell, keep going. Couldn't do, couldn't do any wrong. Out the middle, every ball, it felt. It's mental. So t- it was absolute carnage. Yeah, well, when you're playing at Cardiff, you just got to keep whacking it straight, haven't you? As I say, it's possible. Yeah, for sure. You get your runs. For sure. Uh, um, in the shortest format, it's probably been a, quite difficult for you to be out of the England team, I imagine. Um, and I've heard you touch on it before in, in interviews and things. But how good did it prove that you've still got it off the back of that 100? And is it still something that plays on your mind, trying to get back in? Or? Um, yeah, I guess for the last year or so, it had been a bit of a point to prove, a bit of a, a sore subject. Um and yeah, kind of was. I did kind of reinvent my game a little bit at the beginning of last season to to give it kind of that that another roll of the dice and be a bit more dynamic and explosive. And I guess getting that hundred in the hundred and also improving my strike rate quite a lot um, in last year's hundred um, was really kind of satisfying and, and a proud moment. Um, and then obviously, yeah, then going to New Zealand um, and playing in in three of those T twenties was um, yeah something I'm really proud of. Kind of. Having not played um, for two years in a, in an international T20 before that, um, and obviously getting my hundredth cap within that was pretty cool. Um, but I think at the same time, like looking at it realistically now, like Maya Boucher took her chance really well in that series, scoring an absolutely incredible ninety, and she's continued that form, kind of coming back. And um, yeah, I think that the the squad that they got picked for for New Zealand looks looks really strong and got a lot of depth. So yeah, it's it's really tough to get in there and. Um, there's just so many top order players that are playing well and I haven't probably played that well in the shortest format this summer so it is what it is Yeah it's hard when there's so many all rounders now isn't there Tammy you're going to have to bring out the weird bowling that you've got (laughs) I should have found a picture of my bowling when I was 10 (laughs) Um, Terrifying I think that would get me out Every time. Oh. I just wouldn't be able to handle it. Well, I'd bowl. Be about 41 would, mile an hour. Yeah. What do you bowl? Well, I would bowl like off spin now. That doesn't. There's no mystery to it. It doesn't turn. Um, but I try. I used to bowl big hooping in swingers. I'm going to try and find this for you. You can ask for something else. But um, cause it's, it's worth like it. Off the wrong leg. Well, no. It's I, very confusing. I don't have. My, my front foot is not on the floor when I release the ball. Which is. <laughs> Kind of the issue. It's great, Jack. It's Come, something I cannot worth wait seeing. to see so, this. Are you coachable? Are you going to be coachable? Absolutely not. No. Uh, this is probably like <laughs> the good part of my story. I used to go to Kent um, when I was like 11, 11, 12 in the winter. We had every Tuesday night, my brother and I went for a net and we were split up um, on age groups. And the person in charge of my net for eight weeks was Martin Saggers. So obviously now an umpire, played for England. Okay, yeah. And uh, that was the year I became a wicketkeeper. So if Martin Saggers, who played for England as a seamer, couldn't fix it, then um, here you go. Can you see I always this? find it hilarious that... Oh, my God. And then yeah. I'll get you okay. another. You I've got another also one. Also very, very, very small. Oh, yeah, I was tiny. Front arm is a bit dodgy. Okay, this is, this is how high I had to throw it. <laughs> this is how high I had to bowl throw it. Throw it. I had to bowl it. <laughs> the ball is here. Where is it? There. Elevation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good grenade on you, that. Yeah. This, this is what I mean. This is what it would get me out every time. That's quite go niche. I reckon Way that could work. above the high line. <laughs> Moon balls. Yeah. Try them out. Moon balls. They are. The... Do you know what? In the beginning of your career, Tammy, they would have been lethal. You know, back when we're talking like Hairdo Hayes, Aaron Brindle, like. Diz, Dizzy terrifying. from Knots. She would clean Diz, up. Yeah, but... Diz did it both ways. <laughs> you didn't know what she was doing after after six pints as well. Those probably. were the days when we used to play five days county champs down in Taunton. Back to back, 50 over cricket. <laughs> that would be a tough gig. <laughs> That's a tough gig. Right, so you've played in a bit of, talking about short format, played in quite a few franchise now. You have actually played, obviously, England is, we have T20 cricket, we have 100 cricket, you played in Australia in the Big Bash quite a lot. Um, done really well there, and then Pakistan. Um, what do you sort of make of franchise cricket for you? Like, 
not necessarily for everyone, but for you, is it more of a top up your purse strings situation or do you go, you love it or you want to play in different conditions? Um, oh, you just want to get out of England <laughs> and have some sunshine. Like, <laughs> I, or a bit of everything. Yeah, a bit, a bit of everything. It's probably, franchise cricket is actually something I've probably struggled with over the years in some ways because I, I think I get my best out of, out of myself when when it's you know you feel like you're buying into a team that's almost more than the sum of its part it's, it's kind of on a journey it's worth something and actually being the overseas player that kind of rocks up for cash um really I really <laughs> struggle with it like it doesn't get me going it's like no I'm not you know I want to be there to be part of something and um actually obviously at Welsh Fire in the 100 that's almost what we've tried to do a little bit is is buy into it being a real team, a little bit more than just a franchise that you rock up for. And um, we're probably a little bit lucky in that we do obviously represent a country. We represent Wales. And um, I feel like the ECB, you know, the way people see it, you almost forget that it's England and Wales. And it's kind of something we're trying to really connect to Welsh cricket, Glamorgan cricket. Um, and it, I feel like a lot more at home here. I think I keep joking that I've been an adopted Welsh woman now, but um, I've, I've really, I have definitely struggled in the past to, to feel that connection to where you're playing. It's particularly if you kind of go in for a year and then the next year you're collecting colours from another team again. Well, you are captain and I guess you can control that narrative and that vibe. So that's good. I think that captaincy has almost sort of brought the best out of you in that way. You, are you loving it? <laughs> yeah, I think I think I do. I do enjoy the the captaincy side of it, the getting to be involved um, in the environment, the creating of the culture, um, the decision making. I think um, I've probably always stuck out as someone who's always got an opinion. Um, probably say it at the wrong time sometimes, <laughs> but um, actually, I, I hope if you speak to any of my my teammates here at the Welsh Fire, they'd say that you know I, I do listen and. Um, try to empower them to make their own decisions, particularly like the bowlers. You know, if they want a field, I'm not going to force them to try something else. Um, but I, I just hope that we can have those kind of conversations. But um, yeah, I'm certainly loving it at the minute. Um, but I guess it's always easier when you win. Yeah, I'll get some feedback from uh, our Bev. Oh, Be- Bev, Bev, Bev Langston, Beth Langston for anyone listening. Is my favourite player this year. She's like she's a last minute replacement with injury but she has just been just brought so much to the team already I mean you know we lived with her for a year she's just silent assassin but when she comes out with something you're just laughing and it my stomach hurts from laughing so much at what she comes out with <laughs> she doesn't speak much but when she does it's worth listening to her oh it? absolutely absolutely <laughs> what about IPL then oh should I say WPL <laughs> um obviously devastated and missed that whole era but what what about you is it something you aspire to do before you call it a day or anything oh I mean I've been in the draft surely <laughs> I've been in the draft you're retiring you're not retiring um I've been in the draft no times. you know what I mean um but I think realistically like there's not a chance I'm gonna get picked up um you know there's there's only so many overseas players spots um everyone wants either the world's best um like bowl out and out bowler or out and out batter or all rounders and like at the moment I'm not one of the best opening batters and you can probably get a local girl to do just as good a job um so yeah I think I would love to do it but I think realistically it's it it's come a bit too late for me in my career well there's been some you know people who have got opportunity like Tara Norris and Catherine Bryce and Isabel Wong who's not even playing for England anymore like people are still getting opportunity and India is strange that way in that it's like we no one knows what they love when they love it <laughs> like they love traditional cricket and the way it's played the straight bat the gorgeous looking cover drives Virat Kohli like to a T like they love that and if that means only 100 strike rate they still love you they're not necessarily looking for these 200 250 strike rate players or bowlers um so it's it it does it is mind-boggling sometimes some of the selections i've ever seen like mitchell stark going for so much money and yet we all knew he wasn't going to thrive in that competition because it's not a place where you with his skill set can thrive like he played 
not very good cricket throughout the whole tournament and then had an incredible final, didn't he? Yeah, for sure. But I like, it's, it's just one of those rogue things where they just love it or they don't. It's true. But I, th- I think drafts and auctions are, are funny things. I think it's great to see the, the workings of them. I think even in, you know, the women's, dra- the women's hundred draft last year, you could see people going for money that you're like, no way. Like they've gone for 30, 40, whatever. <laughs> but it's, it's how you, it's if you need that specific skill set that year, then you overpay by a mile to get the best version, get best one available. Um, and yes, yeah, and I guess um, Stark's team needed a bowler, and they they just had to keep putting up the paddle for it. But I think they can afford yeah. it in the IPL. <laughs> can't they? It is. It's just there's always that one story, isn't it? It was like Annabelle Sutherland last one. It was like she was the last good world class all rounder left. So then it became a battle. And had it not been, you know, other teams didn't need her, she would have gone for a third of that. But so it, it is a funny old thing, isn't it? Watching watching your mate just go for sale. It's weird. You feel like <laughs> great. you feel like a piece of meat or something, just like you know, like being <laughs> bought, like or like a house or something. You're like, Am I am I property all of a sudden? Have we gone back to when women were just uh... owned? I don't know, it's just feel a bit of a weird feeling. <laughs> <but>. <laughs> Hey, Tammy, I'm here for it. My wife's doing yeah, all right. You keep loaning her out, girl. <laughs> oh, I will. I'll make sure she's ready every month. <laughs> um, right, uh, moving on. Let's take it right back to when a young Tammy was around um, growing up. Uh, you've already mentioned briefly your parents and your brother. What was it like growing up in a say, cricket household, was it? Did you play with your brother and your dad? And what was it like? Any good stories in there? Uh, yeah, yeah, I played a lot of cricket um, with my brother and my dad, actually. Um, yeah, I guess the first, I used to play in, in the back garden um, with my brother and, and his mates. Um, and then there was one, my dad actually run the, the junior section at our club. So he had under 15s and under 11s. And so my brother was 11, I was eight. And one one game they were <laughs> trying to get out. And it was an 11 side game and he was struggling. He started going, I was, um, sorry. They started going to like seven-year-olds and, you know, it was like, this person can't play, this person can't play. But I come and look at the list that he's like crossing through, throwing in these numbers. Um, and I point at one and I'm like, Dad, I can bat better than him and I can bowl better than him. Like, why can't I play? And my mum was just like, well, she's right. Why can't she play? Um, so, yeah, that was how I played my first game of hardball cricket um, in the boys' team. Um yeah, pretty much being stubborn and, and having an opinion, uh, which is a common theme. But um, yeah, I didn't look back. Um, but yeah, and then I guess the other one was um, we played a lot of cricket together, actually. So um, we, we, my dad was the, the captain of the second team at, at Sandwich Town at, after a very long career playing Kent Premier League cricket. Um, and my brother used to open the batting. I batted at four and kept wicket. And my dad batted at, batted at seven and bowled some absolutely filthy off spin to the long boundary. Um, normally what would happen was us, us <laughs> as kids would um, go out there, play some pretty shots, um, get some great pretty 30s. Dad would go in at seven and um, resurrect the innings and, and save the day. But then um, the number of times it was like caught Beaumont, bowled Beaumont, um, but, you know, they uh, the scorecard just didn't lie. But, um, yeah, it was great times, but also – the odd argument and it was probably for the best that Michael and I never actually ran each other out or one of us might not have made it through. <laughs> through life. <laughs> Our producers saying up the town. Yeah, Ollie, Ollie Collins played in the twos with us as well, bowled some off, off spin. So yeah, handy, handy cricketer. Jordan Cox <laughs> played oh, at Sandwich Town actually. There we go. Yeah, and Mar- Marnus Labashane was overseas player for a year. So yeah. Oof. Oh, okay. When? Um, no, recently. after I left, I think he replaced two thousand and eleven. Two thousand, yeah. Tammy is the stat queen. I've got a good feeling about the quiz. Oh, later. I, I do think I have. Hey, we've been doing your research. I have a random memory of random useless facts. Tammy, <laughs> I'm gonna have to. Yeah, I need to interview you so, on something else <laughs> later because she has this memory where everything I like to forget, she remembers. <laughs> It's really embarrassing, actually. Like that time when <laughs> I was keeping wicket in India. Stop! <laughs> it was my first, my second tour, and it was like, I've got the record for the most buys in an international T20, and it was because 
<laughs> Catherine was bowling slower balls and it was turning on the second bounce in front of me. And I was like, Catherine, please can I stand up? And she basically went, F- no, just stop it. <laughs> just, just wear it, will you, Tammy? <laughs> I was like, please. <laughs> oh, excellent. Uh, no, Tammy. Very stressful going to India. We couldn't win in India for a thousand years. So. Bill, don't it's think we've stressful. won an ODI anyway, series you wanted... there. No, it's very odd. We should have, though. I think we needed some non-biased umpiring. Yeah. Well, DRS might make a difference, actually. DRS would have made a mm-hmm. huge difference. I've had many LBWs there. And that was the mm-hmm. end of your keeping career as well, then? Uh, no. Um... <laughs> we've just, we've, you know, Sarah Taylor, Amy Jones, there's not much way in, is there really? No, mm. no. Um, do you miss, do you miss what... it, Tammy? Or do you, would you ideally want to be a keeper? Or, or would you just be like, I'm happy throwing myself around in the field? Um... Some, sometimes I don't. I don't miss the training. It was quite monotonous. Um, just mm. training kind of day in, day out with, you know, some cones down, pretending to be a Nick. But, um, yeah, I used to love being involved in the game, kind of every ball. Um, I have done it kind of occasionally. There's always keeping gloves in my bag. I like to say I'm the insurance policy for teams. Not quite a backup keeper, but just that kind of, you know, you cash it in when you need it. Utility. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep, in many roles. Now, the Olympics are on the minute, obviously multi, multi dozens of different sports and disciplines. Now, I heard from a little birdie that you were also a gymnast and a hockey player. So could you have ever got to a national level with either of them if you hadn't chosen cricket? And could you have ended up being on my telly these days on a (laughs) different sport? Um, So I did actually go to a national schools championship for uh, gymnastics. However, um, the kind of gymnastics I did isn't in the Olympics. So it's like you're with a pair <laughs> or a trio. So, um, yeah, when I was, so yeah, you kind of pairs, trios or, or fours um, and you kind of do lots of like moves together. I was normally one kind of thrown around and then had to land or um, things like that. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I wouldn't have made the Olympics for gymnastics because, um, yeah, I actually didn't have good enough grip strength to do anything on the bar. So I, I moved over to... Tammy's hands. Tammy's hands are like this. <laughs> they small. Very small. Honestly, I don't know why you ever went down the keeping route because I'm like, right. I don't even know how she puts a cricket ball in her hand because I thought my hands were small, but your hands are like literally And yet you never small. let me off when I drop one off your bowling. <laughs> yeah, we do. We have to remember <laughs> that fact. What was your hockey like? like? That must have helped, helped your batting. Um, yeah, well, I actually did kind of two roles in hockey. At school, I played in goal. I think because I was the one mad enough to be be hit the smallest um no i well, just kind of springy and happy to be smashed balls at um but yeah i got to kind of um i had some kent trials but no i wouldn't have ever made it in hockey they're they're really talented those girls but um actually played cricket with one of them that's out in the olympics giselle ainsley she she played at university with us giselle. um and actually played hockey with one, another one of the girls who was um three years younger than me but absolutely outclassed us every day so grace balls then as well so yeah they they're they're good girls those two good quality she was all right at cricket giselle wasn't she big hooping in swingers a little dabble yeah no one likes those (laughs) (laughs) um while we're talking about you being young let's take fast forward a little bit to the start of tammy's england career 2009 what a year what a great year for england um what was it like for you in your early years, like, did when did you start to feel actually settled and comfortable? Because I know it was a hard start for you in that era where, I mean, it was just a strange kind of era, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, I think. <laughs> and it wasn't really, like, you're an out-and-out opener now, like, it's clear. And that's been clear for a while now, but then it wasn't. Yeah, I think, um, uh, well, <laughs> to give the context, I obviously walked into the team having just won back-to-back World Cups, uh, 50 overs, T20s, uh, the Ashes in Australia. Um, yeah, walked into that team, went to the West Indies, who were ranked seventh or eighth in the world, and we lost both series 2-1, having rested a couple of players. Um, and I was, I had only really played two years of, of county cricket, and the standard of county cricket to international cricket was so vast. Um, and I just wasn't really ready for it, I don't think. Um, wasn't mature enough mature enough as a person um wasn't ready cricket wise I obviously went as a keeper because because Sarah Taylor was injured um but yeah batting kind of eight eight nine I think I ended up at 11 as well um 
and yeah just definitely like <laughs> got hit I, I love the fact I was pretty much a fan walking into that dressing room as well like I was an absolute cricket <laughs> badger like I was like oh my god I'm playing with Lottie and Lyd and Catherine and like all these people that I've been watching <laughs> at Lords win the World Cup at Lords like three months before um so yeah I don't think I really settled for a very long time and within two tours I was back out the team for like another year um came back as a batter batted at kind of five six uh again back out you go um never really found that kind of role and um really struggled to be honest really struggled for a, a long time and I think it was probably only when Robbo came in in kind of 2016 um where I'd really kind of had a bit of a right do I really want to keep going with this because obviously we weren't really getting paid much um my parents still had to pay my rent <laughs> um and I was working two days a week for Chance to Shine and not particularly enjoying it. So I'd had a bit of a, a heart to heart with um, our assistant coach at the time, Carl Crow. He used to play for Leicestershire. He's all over the IPL and franchise gigs now. But I was like, I want to open the batting for England. And that's what I want to do. And I'd basically been working at, at that. And then when Robbo came in, he gave me that chance to do it. And um, yeah, at that point, I, I luckily took it. But I'd had I'd played so many games at that point that... Um, yeah, it was probably luck more than anything that that it, it paid off. There wasn't a bit more. There wasn't enough of back in the day. Coaches, well, obviously, there weren't enough money, not enough staff, or staff at the level we needed, or whatever. That when you came along, it wasn't a case of right, get to know that player, how best they work, and then get that out of them. It was just sort of we're going to coach the way we've always coached. And everybody's going to get the same. And that's just literally not how life works. Everybody's different. Everybody has different needs. Everybody has to be spoken to in a different way. You have to tolerate that and not that. Like me. You just, <laughs> <laughs> that must have been a nightmare. But at least I work like, if you can get the the work hard, the, the work ethic person and the passion, then you can deal with the rest. You can't, you can't create those other, you can't like coach the other two. They just need to be there. Do you know what I mean? So we didn't have that. And so it took literally seven years for someone to come along and be like, Tammy, let me get to know you. Right, this is how you work. This is how I'm going to get the best out of you. Boom, suddenly, 2016, you get your first century. And then you back it up literally a few days later with another century. Well, yeah. And there's the birth of Tammy Bowman. Well, it was, and yeah, it's it was, like, that's all it... It was a complete mental week, actually. It was, it was like, I hadn't even scored 50 for England. I scored a 50 on the Monday, 100 on the Wednesday, and a 150 on the Saturday. Um, just crazy. <laughs> uh, but you're right, though. I think that's I know, the thing. But it it was... used to be like you were an England contracted player, but if you weren't in, in the squad, the squad went away for a tour, and you'd be left in Loughborough for a month without, a co- without any coaches, without anyone, like without a physio, <laughs> without anything. And you're just like, okay, cool. Yeah. And and then you'd get in. You'd, you'd play well at Academy, England Academy, or or county cricket and you get back in and you're open at, at your county, you're open for England A and then you're batting at four, five, six. I think I've ticked them all off actually. But um, <laughs> it was like, they're like, go do what you've been doing. And I'm like, well, actually, I couldn't articulate to you what I've been doing. I've just been batting. That's what I've been doing. <laughs> so that was what it was. It was like, well, go show, go show what you've been doing at your county. I'm like, well, I, I faced the new ball and now I'm going in and it's ragging and I don't know what I'm doing. Like, But anyway, yeah. you learn. <laughs> But the, yeah, it was like the Robbo era. I mean, he gave nearly all of us a second wind. Like, we all went up a level for sure. It was hard work and it was really manipulative and made me really sad at times. <laughs> like, but he got he got the very best out of us. He just knew how he got to know you and he knew how to scrape every last drop of talent from you that there possibly could be and then add a bit more too so it was a really tough environment wasn't it but in terms of making you a world-class cricketer it was his forte Mm, I don't know I think (laughs) short term I obviously I always hear you talk about it and I I always felt it kind of differently um but I think I was lucky in that obviously he saw me as a young player who had talent but completely like not shown it shown that uh, potential at all so he almost nurtured me probably a little bit more but I also felt like I could go go back and say like oh I, I disagree with that I don't agree with what you're doing or 
so I actually had I feel like I had a really good relationship with him and um still stay in contact with him now but I do see how how other people found it a little bit more controlling (laughs) Um, but I think he, I think he learned a lot. Like I could I, sh- I could never do that with Robbo. I sh- <laughs> my pants all the time. But I, th- I think everyone I has you could different relationships with different coaches. Like every every coach is different, and you suit different ones differently. I think he probably saw a little bit of of himself in me and um, tried to help help me in that way. And I'm incredibly grateful to him because I would have had zero career without him, really, or a pretty poor one that no one's going to write home about. So. Um, yeah, but I, I can understand how other people um, didn't find letting everyone know when you were going on holiday and things like that a bit interesting. And and putting fitness testing on the day after the PCR. Oh yeah, was, that was that was a bad day. That was a bad day. That was the low. And then him getting halfway through point. it and saying, "I've made a mistake, haven't I? We should have been celebrating the World Cup tonight." And we were like, "Yeah." I do think, to be fair, I've spoken to him. He he actually says he's learned a lot from when he coached us and that he does it quite differently at Warwickshire now. So just get that little disclaimer in there. Well, (laughs) if he treated you the same way as me, it wouldn't have worked. So that was the beauty. I remember you hated it at first because he was like, I want you to both seam instead of swing. And you didn't like the fact that you're an outswinger. And he was basically saying you'd be better if you're a seamer. (laughs) And he gave me a new ball. Great. <laughs> and you got <laughs> so many great. wickets with it. I did because it then became oh, not a one trick pony. I became a three trick pony. There which Jack Brooks, you were also a three trick pony. Oh, dog. Well, maybe you were a four trick. No, that's what he said. He basically said, I think you're too old and you can't learn new things. And I said, watch this. <laughs> That's, 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 that's where you get the longevity coaching. from. Yeah, longevity comes from always trying to get better. Like, you don't see anybody after a certain age. You think you've hit yeah. your peak in your early 30s and it's the only way down. But actually, how do you sustain? And tr- Even if you squeeze it another year out, right, you've got, still got to try and get better. How do you think Broad and Anderson went on for so long? They were motivated by getting better, really. Like, you could argue Anderson yeah. was better in his last six, seven years with his stats and everything, couldn't you? Yeah, I would say... It, everything happened for a reason. The timing was good. He said that to me at 33. They could easily be quitting by then. But ah, and some people, some people, well, some people didn't want to go the extra mile. Some people would just say, "No, enough's enough." But well, some, some and you say did, spring chicken. I'd had two back surgeries. Some did. Do you want, do you want, do you want me to tell the story about your back surgery, or do you want me to leave that one? <laughs> I'll have it, please. Well, so the second, no, the second back surgery she had, it was the year we lived together. So it was myself, Catherine, uh, Amy Jones, um, Beth Langston, who uh, won the World Cup with us in 2017, and and another uni girl um, at the time. And Catherine got sent home from Australia and had this back surgery. And um, yeah, did you wipe my ass? Never. No, I didn't have to do that, but I did have to put your pants and socks on for a week. <laughs> <laughs> It's all coming out now. <laughs> Just to love. Right, this is making it real for that's, that's what real friends do, Jack. Yeah. Oh, really? None of my teammates would have to do that for me, by the way. You had to, though. Like, no, you saw, you, you, I saw you in so much pain, like, so many times. Like, when you got flown home from the West Indies, that World Cup, like... You just doped on painkillers for days. And when we had to go to the airport, you in that wheelchair, and you're just in tears. I think all of us were just crying, but... Been through some times, that haven't we? Real low point. I thought that was it for you. Like no, no word of a lie. I thought that was it. You were not playing again. And the fact that you uh, did, me also, you did, and you got to like World, World Cup finals after that, and you carried on playing. And I mean, you went way past what I asked you. And um, she won't remember this either. But this is my <laughs> stupid brain again. We won won the World Cup 2017. We're at the after party at Lords, and we're all obviously. Highs, well, you know, we've all had a few drinks. Danny Hazel's going around. We were, Hi. No, not like that. Like, as in, like, just like excited that we've won the World Cup. <laughs> um, don't, no, definitely not. Um, no, so we're all, yeah, after party. Danny Hazel's been running around with a bottle of rum, putting it into people's mouths, like, just because. Um, and I get older, Catherine, I'm like, come on, mate, promise me four more years, four more years. Like, we've got to retain it in New Zealand or wherever it was. Um, and she was like, mate, I'm not playing four more years. Like, not a chance. I'm done. Give it a couple of years and ashes. That's about it. 
literally like seven years later, she's still going. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh. oh, God. I just remember Lottie saying, I think this kept me going a long time. Lottie said to me once, that I would never play as long as she did. She's like, no chance. And then I played one more year than she did. <laughs> I think that must have been it. That was that it. what drove you on, I reckon. Right, Jack. We're really we we are really droning on here, aren't we? I love we're, it. Um... I absolutely love it. I, I, that World Cup final, by the way, in twenty twenty seventeen. Um, I remember watching it, and you both played at Headingley. I remember watching it in the lun- in the food room at Headingley after a Champo game. So it would have been the would it have been the evening, wouldn't it, when you won it? Yeah. Um, again, go on no, until the evening. Yeah. Um, and I remember both sets of players from that game sat there watching it with coaches and the room was packed and like everyone was properly engaged in the game and obviously Anya went through and Gunn dropped the dolly and it was all going on wasn't it plenty of drama <laughs> poor Jenny Gunn oh, that's poor like Jenny. all anyone ever remembers her for and actually she was a gun that World Cup like got us out of so many rubbish positions with the bat um, but yeah that dropped catch she was a top international cricketer for a very long time mm. that's what she was <laughs> <laughs> right Jack I um, reckon we got Time for yeah, one more question. What do you reckon? Um, okay. Outside of cricket, Tammy, or post cricket, have you got any plans in place? What do you What do you reckon you're going to be doing in the future? Coaching, media, something of stuff away from the game. Have you got anything going on? Uh, yeah, obviously, already dabble with with some commentary. So, um, would love to continue that um, a lot more. Um, I'm also starting a masters next year um, in kind of leadership in sport, and I'd love to potentially look at you know maybe directors of cricket or general manager type type things um i've really enjoyed kind of the strategic side of like the welsh fire captaincy and it's kind of opened my eyes to maybe something that i hadn't thought about beforehand um i think coaching for me i'd I'd be i'd be horrendous i'd just try and fix everyone like i'd never sleep i'd just be like worried about them and (laughs) trying to control everything and and then when they stop over the white line you can't do it for them so i'd be i'd be yeah killing myself i think so i I don't quite think coaching for me maybe like an assistant coaching in a couple of franchises where you rock up and take the cash which is completely what i've said i don't do as a player but (laughs) um no i'm kidding i'm kidding i think i think i'm pretty clear in what i want to do i think you'd be good as a gm tam you get it done we need some strong females. That's the plan, and especially as, and especially as like this all this tier one stuff and like it's going down a really great line where, you know, that will be a big job, and I imagine you could that would be men's, women's, and pathways, so you could really make a big difference. And you're a massive badger, so you probably know all about men's cricket as well. So <laughs> <laughs> can't stop watching the hundred. Uh, like can't stop watching cricket. The cricket never stops. That's what. Uh, <laughs> you've got to right yeah. should we go crack onto the pca yeah, mvp so the update MB, mvp update in the men's game um plenty of games come thick and fast pretty much every day in the metro bank one day cup warwickshire's ed barnard is still ahead of the mvp mvp standings he basically is captain of warwickshire he opens a band and opens a bowling and he's dominating uh, and he's very very far ahead of zach chapel in second place and Jack Leach, my old mucker from Somerset, he's in third place uh, after a six for the other day. Uh, and in the 100 MVP rankings, James Vince is top of the leaderboard, just ahead of Craig Overton and Liam Dawson. Craig Overton is teammate at the Brave. Liam Dawson, the all-rounder, um, who is always doing very well in MVP-related point systems. Uh, what's going on in the women's version, Bronte? Well, as you know, there's only the 100 going on in the women's. So, and no surprise, as you all know, Jack, is that there's three all-rounders at one, two, and three, which is how it generally happens. Um, And they always end up catching balls as well and getting run-outs because they're always put in the best positions. And that was Elise Perry at number one. has been overtaken by Aussie mate Annabelle Sutherland, who's been on the charge for the old superchargers recently. They've been, they've spanked someone today. Who was it? Phoenix. The Phoenix. Yes, which didn't allow, obviously, Elise Perry to get some old MVBP points in there. So very tactical for Annabelle. Um, so she's leading the way. And then the best player in the world, my Natty, coming in at third. And I really need her, if she's not going to get to the finals, to at least get MVP, which is actually kind of impossible. Tammy, do the MVP points continue into the finals as well? 
I don't know. I'm, yeah. I'm not an all-rounder, so I pay no attention to the MVP points yeah. whatsoever. This is where they should stop the points so that, you know, she can go. <laughs> anyway, that's the uh, one, two, and three. Um, have you got anyone you're backing, Tammy, for that award? Oof. Um, well, I'm going to obviously go Welsh Fire. Um, so our best all-rounder would be Hayley Matthews. So, yeah, she's she's got two me- uh, meerkat match heroes already. Um, yesterday's was and then her the batting. Uh, one-off 15 balls. The yeah. one-off 16. Yeah, that was slightly strange for me. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. She did get nine leg buys, so like team runs wise, it was good. And we were only chasing 85, <laughs> so um, at one point leg buys was yeah, winning right. by a long way. So um, yeah, kept kicking them, kept kicking them. There's no right. problem with that. Uh, Cricket Archive guest Statler, Tammy, you have not missed an ODI for England since June 2016. You've played 95 consecutive 50 over matches for England since then and sit third on the all-time list of successive games played. How proud are you with that? You fancy getting up to 100 or? Uh, yeah, um, that that's a pretty cool record, I think. Um, particularly as an opening batter. Did you know that one? I didn't know how many I knew. I get tagged in it a lot whenever I play one, so. I knew I'd, I'd play quite a that, lot, though? as in I knew I hadn't missed one. Um, yeah, I think it's really cool, I think, Not- to kind of touch wood, have been physically fit enough to play every single game and also, you know, scoring enough runs occasionally to keep your place as well, I think, is important. So, yeah, that's a cool one and probably never going to catch Matali Raj, so let's be honest. Why? Well, she had, she, had a, a nine- she had an easy life. She stood at, like mid or cover and just didn't or, move or, didn't or just went off for 20 overs <laughs> you're on 95 she got 109 so you're not uh, 14 yeah. behind so if you map out england's schedule over the next like 14 games is not that far off is it it's probably the end of next year maybe is it sometime next year yeah there's a world Tell cup next year, so that's always a good good Boom. bumper beaumont number one <laughs> i've got you right we are on to under the lids big question. So Tommy Beaumont, please tell our listeners and us, maybe not me, I might know this. Um, one thing that we, and we've gone under the lid a lot today, so I've probably told us everything. <laughs> one thing that we might not know about you. Um, I am a massive Harry Potter geek. I reckon I could win Mastermind specialist subject with harry potter knowledge interesting i've got um i think we've got a harry potter like trivial pursuit board game downstairs we'll have you around for some wine you're on my team (laughs) complete it mate (laughs) you're on my team yeah (laughs) look well i didn't know that actually so great excellent knowledge well um well none of these quiz questions that are coming up i don't think will be Harry Potter related, unfortunately for you, they're all cricket related, which is probably your second best subject. <laughs> probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was actually talking to Callum about what can I say is like what's what's something nobody knows about me, and we realised that I'm just really boring, and there's just nothing really to say. No, that's not very nice. <laughs> I know, I know. We're going to put your quiz knowledge to the test now, though, in our last round, which is the quiz, um, and the questions are generally cricket themed. There might be the odd little curveball in there. Um, there is a prize. We do now finally have a prize for the Woo! leaderboard winner. Just to let you know, the leaderboard at the minute is joint first is Ollie Hannon Dolby, Harry Brook, and Catherine Bryce, all on eight. So you have a minute to answer as many as you can. Quick fire. So if you don't know, just pass and we'll try to fire out another question to you. Um, each question scored correctly is one run. Um, obviously, eight is top of the minute. And our quiz prize is a £500 Jay Lindenberg voucher. Um, men's fashion, women's fashion, golf apparel, golf merchandise, clubs, etc. Are you a golfer? Most people on this pod seem to be golfers. No, don't like <laughs> golf at all, so I might just get seven. Neither do I, we'll really, sort, Tammy. That's we'll me we'll and you sort some yeah. different for you, Tam. Or a nice club or something. <laughs> 500 um, pounds worth of drinks. No, no. Let's no. get the scoreboard up. And we will fire away in three, 
two, one, go. In which Caribbean country did you make your ODI debut for the West Indies? St. Kitts and Nevis. Here we go. Uh, yes. How many international centuries have you scored? Nine. Oh, total. Oh, who was the only non-English... Oh, uh, yeah. Who was the total. only non-English... <laughs> who was the only non-English player to be named a Wisdom Cricketer of the Year alongside you in 2019? Brett Coley. Yes. Yes. Heather Knight, Joss Butler and which other English David players have scored centuries in all formats? Yes. Yes. You were the top run scorer in the 2017 ODI World Cup by how many runs? One, three or One. Ten? Thanks, Nat. One. Correct. Yes. Who top scored for the Blaze in the Charlotte Edwards Cup final this year? Catherine Bryce. Yeah. Yes. Who has more Instagram followers, you or Brunsey? Or me. Yes. yes. How many yeah. balls did it take you to set the fastest T20 century by an Englishwoman? 47. Yes. In which country have you scored the most international centuries against? Against South Africa. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. How many times have you played as a keeper for England? 15, 17, 20? 15. No. And 17. one more question. You're on the buzzer. Yeah. One more question? Yeah, because you chatted. Yeah, because we, we said the same question three times. <laughs> this is to go top of the leaderboard, so no pressure. Which... <laughs> Bowler eventually dismissed you for 208 in last year's Ashes. Ash Gardner, she got eight. <laughs> <laughs> As if she wouldn't know that one. Phew, man. <sighs> Have you just gone top? Dirty swipe. She's just gone flying to the top. It was a dirty swipe. Boom. Oh, goodness me. Do you know what? I knew it. I had a feeling about this. Tammy just, like, knows these things. There's a, there is a Harry Potter one in here. Here we go. There is a Harry Potter is one in there? here. Sure. Yeah. Um, which actress who appeared in the Harry Potter films was also born in Dover? Oh, don't know about that. Were you, were you, were you ah, born in Dover? Yes. I was born in Dover. Were yes. you born in Dover? Yes. Uh, it's a very famous actress. You probably get her from Helena Bonham Carter. No, Miriam Margulies. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Mar She's how do you say it? How do you say her name? Is that how you say it? How oh, I just said it, Miriam Margulies. <laughs> Is it my goals or something? It's not my goals, no. My is <laughs> darling. You've gone top of the league. Congratulations, Tammy. We'll sort out a... Ah, oh, top of the league. Well, you can take the money, actually, and maybe go and change it for cash if you want. <laughs> no, you're right. Because you like cash. But... <laughs> <laughs> I'm buying a house. Thank you so much, Tammy, for coming on and sparing some time for us. That was awesome. Awesome chatting to you. Really good. Thanks for coming on Under the League. Thanks for having me, yes, guys. Yes, Tammy. Sorry for embarrass embarrassing you, Kathy. Um, what a beauty. You obviously know her very she well, don't She's class, isn't she? Yeah, she's very switched on to her cricket. Very. There's not she anything Tammy doesn't know. She no. is... Yes, the be all and end all of cricket. I found her very insightful when she's on in commentary as well. She speaks very well. She's very good on that. Yeah, she's. That's why she makes her a good captain. She's, she's always itching, even when playing for England. You could just see her ticking all the time, dying to say something <laughs> to someone. Like every ball, like just wants to be in it and involved. And we're very similar in that way. We love just passionate and just mm. love it. Like I'm just getting in battles and yeah, she's great. She's English cricket through and through. Super stuff. Yes, yeah, superstar. Um, just to wrap up, then we've got a bit of feedback this week. Um, we've got one from Glenn. Love the show. Oh, yeah. Another great episode. I really enjoy the mix of both men and women professionals. All the other podcasts and vodcasts I watch or listen to are either one or the other. There we go. Vodcast. Vodcast. I've never heard of a vod. Vodcast. Video podcast. You can watch podcasts. So basically, us on YouTube, just me all in around. Um, thanks, Glenn. Very, very keen. We are keen to spread it as much as possible. And we've had some fantastic guests on both sides, haven't we? So, um, a yeah. message from Jagat Love the pod. You both are doing a great job. Catherine was great in the com box yesterday in the hundred. Nat calling you was hilarious as well as cute. <laughs> Keep up the good work. I think you should get Cappy or Perry in the next episode, or anyone who has played against Catherine in the past, because that would be fun. That sounds like a great idea. We could get a bit more on what it's like playing against you and how much of a nightmare you are. That sounds like a terrible idea. 
<laughs> Shabna Mishmail on here actually. There we go. Another pasty. Another nasty pasty. We'll have a little we'll have a little think because we have been asking, mm. you know, for people's opinion on who we should get out here. So this that's the first time anyone's like had a little bit of a suggestion. So we will answer the call, don't you worry. We'll, we'll try and get some global superstars on. Leave it with us. We'll, sure. we'll work it under the lid. We can do everything. Um, and always, please get in touch via socials with hashtag under the lid or hello at under the lid dot co dot uk. Um, that's it for this week. We'll have another superstar guest lined up for next week. Um, we'll keep you guessing in the meantime. But in the, you could hit subscribe, leave a review, tell your friends, tell everyone how great it is. Um, have a fantastic week, and we will see you next week. Yes. Ciao for now, everybody. could probably do an extra episode on just embarrassing stories. <laughs> How about I co-host one and we interview <laughs> Kathy? Yes. yes. Yes, I like the sound team. of it. There's something, there's something in that, I think.